What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the New Orleans Saints franchise. We've got the offseason ready to go. I've got the draft here as well for you guys. So free agency draft. We got the whole offseason in this episode, and I hope you guys are ready for it because I'm ready to make some moves. Maybe not so much through the free agency list because, again, we are in kind of a cap hold at this point where our cap is not it's still not in a good position we just don't have any money to spend and you guys will see that here in the next couple of minutes but up on your screen we're just kind of running through the awards list and as you guys know that really follow along with how madden works if you're an award winner i don't know if it's a being a finalist or like in the top 10 that you get dev trait upgrades but i think you got to win the award in order to get a dev trait upgrade so i was really disappointed that kemba digby was the, the number two defensive rookie of the year in the NFC. I wish that he would have jumped Joey Bryant. It was another player that we were thinking about taking. At least the committee, the panelists were taking, were thinking about taking there in our live stream. So unfortunately, we did not go out and grab Joey Bryant. He wins defensive rookie of the of the year in the NFC. And as far as the AFC goes, quarterback Reggie Davis, Rain Rowe, Ezra Frost, Hans Brolo, a lot of players that we've come to know and uh, be familiarized with their names. At least I have been. I don't know about you guys, but I'm recognizing all of these names out here. So let's move on and take a look here at the Super Bowl results. And pretty cool Super Bowl, man. We got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers against the Denver Broncos. And yes, Russell Wilson. Yes, Broncos country, let's ride. They got themselves a Super Bowl. Congrats to them, man. 35-28, your final score. And now let's take a quick rundown at the retirees. We got Demario Davis retiring for our Saints. A couple players from the Raiders there. Chandler Jones, Trent Williams, Marvin Jones. J.J. Watt retires from the Cardinals. I also saw Cameron Jordan retire. So that was, ended up being a good trade for us. You get rid of Cameron Jordan last season in the offseason uh, to get some picks back. And I think we got a good return from that because he, he ended up retiring the next season. So I like it. It was a good move for us. And... Uh, he, I think he played well out there for New England. I didn't really follow him too much, but, you know, it was kind of like sayonara. <laughs> but let's get into some free agent negotiations now and or some player contract negotiations, I guess you'd say. They're not free agents yet. But Jameis Winston is up for renegotiation, and I think that we have to bring him back. It just seems realistic that we would consider this. The man threw for 4,600 yards in back-to-back -back seasons, 30-plus touchdowns back-to-back -back seasons. Yes, the interceptions need to get cut down. There was a lot more simulation done in season number two versus season one, but Jameis still threw a lot of picks. So I think it just comes with the territory. That is just what Jameis Winston is, but we will bring him back. He does solidify that quarterback position for us for the next three seasons at least, unless he just plays very, very badly. Then we got to consider taking a quarterback, maybe a draft or another free agent or something, maybe a trade down the line, but that's that's neither here nor there right now we're gonna get Jameis signed up and he's our quarterback for the next few seasons so you also saw that we did bring back Calvin Throckmorton just gives us some depth James Hurst gives us some depth as well plus Adam Troutman he played really well in his first season as a full-time tight end so we moved Taysom Hill from tight end to fullback and I thought he did fine so he will be our tight end at least for the next few seasons we'll bring Will Lutz back but here's a list of who we're not bringing back we got Harvin the third, not bringing back. That was just kind of a get me over punter signing last year. Taco Charlton, Michigan guy. I would have loved to bring him back, but I think just again the money, the amount of money that we have, it just wouldn't have worked out. Shy Tuttle would have been nice, nice add on for next season as well. But he wanted one season. He's 28 years old. We've got two rookie defensive tackles. We got Digby and the other tackle, the defense tackle I should say, uh, Will Tremblay from Alabama. Both those guys should take the next step this season. I'm really like leaning into that and hoping that we could, you know, give them more some more playing time. So with our cap situation, I really thought about cutting Caesar Ruiz from Michigan. I really thought about it, but he's pretty good as an 83 overall player, and he's got some versatility. He actually had a lot of versatility coming into the NFL from Michigan. He played at guard, he played at center as well, and so we're moving some guys around. So we got Ruiz at center now, and Grigsby's going from backup left guard to starting right guard. So even though you could cut him and you could get $12 million more million to spend in free agency, I felt like the smarter move is just to keep the guy. Like, he's he's really good right now. Like, $12 bucks, you can't really spend, you can't really, like, 
get two free agents for the price of Ruiz that would benefit you, right? So I think I think this is just the better route to go. So we're gonna go after Asmar Bilal, Rigoberto Sanchez, and Christian Kirksey. So we, we shore up the linebacker spots and we get our punter. I think Sanchez is gonna be a better punter than what Harvin was. He was a 70, his kick power was nothing basically. You know, he's just, again, he was kind of a get me over punter at this point. But so we did end up signing Bilal. We got Kirksey and we got Sanchez and we have barely enough money to do anything else. We got about $1.7 million left. And just to kind of give you guys a nice little rundown here of what happened across the league. We got Derrick Henry going to Atlanta, Dylan signs with Miami and the Lions actually went crazy. Did you guys see that? The Lions ended up getting Ronald Jones. Gabriel Davis, an 85 wide receiver from Buffalo, and they got Justin Herbert. Like, let's not, like, let's let's not let's not avoid talking about that. They got Justin Herbert in the in the house in Detroit. So pretty crazy, right? So they go back to the well at an Oregon quarterback. No more Joey Harrington, of course. So they want to like change the narrative about West Coast quarterbacks. But so Justin Herbert leaves Los Angeles, comes to Detroit. Hopefully it works out for Detroit, man. I really want to see him kind of take the next step. But they they went crazy in this offseason. They got Jones, Herbert. They got James Bradbury. They got Rashawn Gary that we're going to look at here in just a moment. They went absolutely nuts. Gabriel Davis, KJ Hamler. It was crazy. It was crazy. But around the rest of the league, I think the winners here was Arizona as well. So they, they actually signed a lot of players. Uh, the Texans, the... The Titans actually signed a bunch of people too. The Broncos got Ed Oliver. So the Broncos actually had a pretty good offseason themselves. So winning the Super Bowl over Tampa Bay, and now they sign a bunch of people too. So they're looking to like restock and, and get ready to go. So unfortunately for Zach Bond, you know, I loved playing with Zach Bond. He had a couple big tackles in this series, but I think we're gonna let him go and and, uh, and and find success elsewhere. He was he was a nice player, made some inter interceptions, made some really nice plays, but he's gonna go out to Arizona now to, to test his luck out there. But yeah, you see Arizona, Detroit, just some, some familiar teams that are popping up, some consistent teams. Carolina made some big moves as well. So we gotta watch out, we gotta watch out. The, the cap space is, it hurt us in year two. We had to make some, some changes to how we were planning and structuring our team. Got a lot of draft capital last season. We hit on a lot of our picks. Really helped us get to the playoffs this season. And uh, now we're moving on to year number three, man. And, and I think our youngsters are really starting to come up a little bit. So Trevor Penning, see a nice progression. We got Ruiz back at center. Grigsby's up to a 78. So that's really nice to see. Ramchak's getting a little older. So I think we might want to consider in this draft class, maybe possibly an offensive lineman. Maybe we focus on that next year. I'm not quite sure where we want to go with that it just depends on how the draft like shakes out we've got Peyton Turner's young at left end we got Bryce Huff who's still got some more seasons left under his belt Digby Tremblay I like that mix man 77 76 I, I think that's going to play that's going to do that's going to do just fine and take a look at this Caesar Braun from Tulane you guys that helped out with the draft you killed it because Caesar Braun was a hidden dev and he's a superstar x-factor boys he was a stats leader he was an All-American, and he's a custom. So, you know, customs already start with star dev trade, minimum. They cannot they cannot go lower than that. They can't be a normal. They can't lose their dev. So they start with a star, and anything added onto that, any awards that they add onto that, just it's, it's gravy. So Caesar Braun, man, you guys did it. Did it awesome. You did, you did it well. So he's going to be a superstar X Factor. 69 overall player, too. So he's going to progress really, really uh, really really fast plus we got Paulson Adebo he had a couple inter he had a, he had a lot of interceptions actually not a couple he had a lot of interceptions last season and must have been one of the best defensive backs in the NFC for winning an award because he was a star dev and now he's a superstar dev that's awesome for our cornerback situation especially being cornerback number two now right behind Marshawn Lattimore it's a position that I've long thought about that we really need to focus on and kind of shorten that up. We need a cornerback number two, and I think we got one now with Paulson Adebo. He's seen a lot of progression here. All right, so just a very, very quick sim of the draft. And now guys, last season I did this live and I had a panelist, I had a group of people that helped me make picks. Well, to get this video out for you guys and get this year three started, 
I basically went into Discord last night and I had a group of people make these picks for me. So we analyzed some players, like this took about two hours to do, and they had a couple things that they wanted to focus on. They thought we needed to go after tight end. The best tight end available would be Eugene Edwards from Clemson. We also thought about taking Zach Starts at safety, possibly moving LA Rowe over from free safety to strong safety. And, you know, we take a look at what we've got here with Zach Starks. This, this guy's a boss from Alabama. He's, he's great. He's a top five in almost every category uh, for measurables in his pro day and his combine. But ultimately, we decided that we were going to go with Eugene Edwards. He's a normal dev. So there you go. In first round, a first round tight end, late pick in the first round, but... It, it did kind of hurt us. So, again, I make all the players. This, these guys are all coming in from the Cajun 6 series. So I know who all these guys are. I know what their dev traits are. But you guys don't know what they are, right? So I'm, uh, that's why I'm leaning towards the community to make these picks for us. And uh, so we kind of we, we had to bite the bullet there a little bit. It could have been a little bit better. But we're saddled with the normal dev tight end. Mario Jones from ULM. Would have been a nice pick there, I think. But his F block shedding, something to consider, and we didn't go that route. So looking at everything else here, we were maybe thinking about free safety, Shaden Sprinkle, Dalvin Thornton as an outside linebacker. We need some linebacker help, more so in the middle, not so much on the outside. We got Pete Werner on the right and Caesar Braun on the left, but Thornton's pretty good, you know, a pretty pretty good player here to pass up on. But we got a lot of depth there right now. With Caesar Braun with an X factor, he's got to play every single day. Middle linebacker is something that we should probably consider here. I, I told this to the guys in the chat, but they wanted to go with Shade and Sprinkle. They want to like get a safety net, like an insurance policy out on LA Row in case we want to move him over to strong safety because he can play a little bit a little bit of both. I wanted to show Patrick Weisbecker. He's a custom guy from Louisiana Tech and He's got some pretty good numbers too. He's pretty slow, so we could have moved into the middle linebacker spot, but the community, the group, they wanted Shade and Sprinkle, and that's who we're gonna go get as a free safety. So, which pretty much indicates that LA Rowe is gonna have to move over to strong safety um, after Tyron Matthew retires, really, but or we let him go. We also get Dalvin Thornton. He was still up on the board. He was a guy that we targeted, the guy that we wanted, and he was just too good to pass up at that point. So we did go out and grab him. Now, Jordan Baribault, the two-lane wide receiver, he was a season record holder, a single season record holder at Tulane for receptions and yards. Guy was amazing, but he's slow, very slow for a wide receiver. He runs a 4.8, but he's a very physical receiver, standing six foot one. Some good spectacular catch. Might be a guy that we could take a little bit later, but they also considered Donnie Doan from Southern. Runs a 4-4. We looked at David Garrett, a guy that coming out of TCU, nice power back, could be a nice compliment to Ryan Armstrong once Kamara is gone. But they wanted to go with Donnie Doan, and he's got a hidden dev. So he's a custom guy. He's, he's probably going to be a minimum of the star dev. And Jordan Baribault is also a minimum star dev. So we were able to get both Cajun 6 players here, Baribault and Donnie Doan, late, which was nice, but I, it, it was unexpected that Baribault was going to fall all the way down to that position. I like the Donnie Doan pick. I personally would have gone with Garrett, the, the TCU running back, but they kind of like the idea that Donnie Doan is going to be that elusive guy, that receiving back, maybe that Alvin Kamara replacement someday. Chase Edmonds type of player, right? Something like that. Javid Best type of guy, a receiving back versus a power back, which uh, Garrett would have been. We basically would have been tied with two two power backs. We'd have Armstrong and Garrett. It's kind of like they both do the same things. You, there's nothing like there's nothing differentiating your running attack really at that point. So Donnie Doan, nice depth pick right there as we're just kind of running through the rest of the draft class here. So a couple standouts we've got, let's see, Eric Thorne, a left tackle, would have been a nice pick for us, but we didn't have a second rounder. We had a late first, no seconds, late third, and the rest was history there, guys. So um, a couple players that I was thinking about grabbing would have been like um, Mike Scales, running back from Ohio State, possibly uh, Ronnie Good. <laughs> I, I like Ronnie Good. 
from Boston College. There's Connie Goodson Jr. going to the Detroit Lions. He is a custom player. Cooper Caddick, the lefty. Yul Monroe, you guys remember the video that posted earlier today? He's got, he had 11 touchdowns, no picks. So might be a nice little sleeper pick there for Jacksonville. We're actually going to watch that game um, in next episode as we talk about the preseason. But yeah, and that's pretty much all I want to show you guys here with this. Patrick Weisbacker getting taken as a 70 overall player in the fourth round to Arizona. So Arizona still continues to kill it. There's Henry Causey, a linebacker there from Texas A&M, played in the national championship game. So there's a couple players that we probably would have went if I was doing the draft, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to go with the community vote. I really think that that's important for this series because, I, again, I make all these players. I know who they are. I know what their dev trade is. I know how good they are. And that, that's kind of cheesy for me, right? So I don't think that that's pretty fair. But the tight end, Eugene Edwards, our number one pick or our round one pick, our first pick, he's going to be tight end number two right behind Adam Trauman. I think that's going to be a really nice spot for him. We do use a lot of dual tight end sets right there. I think that that's going to do us a lot of good. Very good receiving tight end, a vertical threat, and our linebacker spot. We got Braun, middle linebacker, being Kirksey and Barnes. There we go. Barnes. Sorry. <laughs> and Werner at the right. And then our cornerback situation with Alante Taylor, Bradley Roby, Marshawn Lattimore, Paulson Adebo. It's a good team, man. It's a good team. It's getting better. It's getting better. I think uh, last season was definitely the, the year that we wanted to see where we were. Nice bar test about where we were. Coming off of a Super Bowl loss against the Chiefs in Season 1. Made the playoffs. Won a playoff game. Lost to the Cowboys in the divisional round, unfortunately. But um, I think this season we do look a little bit better. And I think we should win two playoff games. That's going to be the goal yet again, is making the playoffs as many times as we possibly can in this series, guys. So kind of holding serve as that expectation continues. So guys, that's it for the video. Leave a like if you like this thing. Next time I see you will be next Thursday. And we will be covering the preseason and week number one action. And uh, we'll get that underway. So guys, again, leave a like if you like this thing. Thank you so much for watching. And peace.